the average Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Sarah Chiu. Again, uh, this is my program, Basket Starfish, our language core. And uh, this is the basket starfish you see on the screen. And this is basically what I try to um, promote. Uh, I believe that all languages are related and no language is isolated. And we are speaking uh, part of the uh, remnants of the ancient language. And uh, the tree-like model of the language family should be changed. I think we all share and stand on the same ground sharing one single core. And I'm going to present my research, my more than 20 years of research from a female point of view from Asia. And uh, you will notice that some of the views I have might be a little bit different from you learn from uh, basic uh, linguistics. Um, okay. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight I'm going to continue uh, what uh, going on last night. Uh, one second, I take this off. Yeah, I'm going to continue on uh, what I, <laughs> sorry, what I uh, uh, started last week, I mean. So uh, I'm going to continue to talk a little bit about building, how uh, human beings started to build walls and then we develop into cities and, and so on. And of course, uh, you will pay a lot of attention to the sound it uh, takes. And again, once again, you know, the, the K and the G sound takes uh, place a lot, as you will see. And you will see there is a lot of similarity between Sumerian, Chinese, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. And uh, why are they so similar if they were all uh, speaking part of the ancient language? And you will make your own decision. And the other thing is that I learned uh, how to upload uh, my past programs on the YouTube. So uh, from now on, if you start to search with my the name uh, basket starfish our language core you will see the rest of the uh, episodes before okay now tonight I'm going to begin with what I'm going to show you um, okay Okay, once again, uh, you will see the east and west integrated view. And then uh, I will defend the pictograph actually are more versatile and they give you a lot more uh, information than just the alphabetical system. And also the travel experience, you know, can be more valuable than just sticking to the purity of a Eurocentric view. Uh, of course, I am from Asia myself, so you will see how I look at the world of language. And you will also see that uh, some of of the alphabetic writing are also ideographic and also uh, vocabularies are slowly built from the uh, foundation as you will see uh, from today uh, the war itself and of course before that it was actually from a basic uh, floor mat that's, that used the K sound and you can look at them from the past episode if you go to the YouTube too so uh, you will see that the ubiquitous uh, vowel sound A R um, e, I, O, U, all these sounds actually takes place as a living sound and also uh, the K and G also uh, takes place, you know, like the Sanskrit system or the Indic system, they will use the Ka as the first consonant, you know, in their writing system. So the East and West all become part of the whole thing. And uh, in this research, I will use the Cantonese and the, also the Southern dialect of Chinese uh, rather than the Mandarin because I believe that they are as mutated but I will also show you the Mandarin sound you know as a comparison so again I will show you this to make you prepare that are uh, all the interlacing etymology notes so you will be thrown from one culture to another uh, because the language family is not a tree-like, it's never non-lineal and also uh, there is no hierarchy in our languages. So the first of all, I will show you again this I showed you last week, um, the creator. Of course, you use a C, but the sound is actually a K too. And that uh, you will see 
uh, is a plaque that you uh, will see in the Louvre Museum and this is the King of Lagash about 2500 BC and this is a Chinese writing gay which means the foundation or the base as you will see the basket is a very important thing to clear to carry those clay and the other important object is this thing right there which you will see that is the uh, earth rammer right there um, this is to use use to pound the earth into uh, adobe and uh, the Chinese actually use this uh, object to uh, write uh, what we call gong uh, to mean to work or to labor and then the Chinese have this writing too um, someone carrying a, a basket on the head and but then uh, we actually use it to mean the clay itself again the clay is actually a K sound okay and then um, the other Chinese uh, writing ancient Chinese writing uh, will be this gan sound and it actually means uh, difficult uh, of course you know when people started to build all these shrines and and worshiping places you know they uh, it's all difficult work but I want you to pay attention this to this horn shaped thing which you will see later on in other slides and um, uh, uh, you just have to remember this I will show you late in the later slides okay this is hieroglyph uh, pronounced as cut and this to work you see the pe person also carrying a basket on his head and also this is Sumerian and uh, now you have to pay attention to the to the sound right there the kin right there to work you will see all these are case sound right there and this is actually to show you how they pound the earth sticking together and this uh, I show you already last week the dub sound and means means to hip up and to pile or to encircle of course you know they were building wall with this with this pounder itself this lines are actually showing the sticking together of different layers of clay okay and uh, the Sanskrit are uh, already in, not in the pictograph uh, system. They uh, use a writing system, but you will see that the sound remains the same. Carmen is actually a work or, or, or an act. And um, also, uh, they, they work for difficulties, same as like the Chinese. It, this is ka, this is ka. Okay, this, this is a similar mutating sound. Kathina is difficult. Okay, um, I want you to, uh, after looking at that, I want you to pay attention to something completely different. As I say, I uh, will present you from an Asian uh, female uh, point of view. And uh, you will have to think that all these men are building uh, those tall buildings. But uh, give it a thought. Who weave those countless strong baskets to carry the clay? So I want you to understand that every macho culture behind there is a very feminine culture uh, behind it. As I said, if there is no women behind to weave the mat, no man will be able to sit down on the hot desert, hot sand uh, to uh, perfect the stone tools so it's the same thing uh, every single wall you will have tons of women working behind to work on weaving clothes and also of course in the recent history a lot of American women will be producing all those weapons uh, and back in the factory okay now back to this slide again I want you to look at the word Adobe again I, sh I, I said that you know a lot of the uh, alphabetic system is also ideographic graphic so as you can see this is actually a Chinese symbol and uh, the Phoenician also use a similar symbol and then uh, when it uh, be, uh, turned around it become the A itself and in Chinese whenever you see the symbol it also means an unseen energy that marks an action so uh, a lot of the English word uh, you will see the A mark uh, at the beginning either it is um, a, an action to go uh, forward or it is an action to go against all these words as anti against you will understand why the A is leading those words okay back to this adobe and the sumerian has this uh do sound as you can see is the horn uh, animal that pushing against something it means to push to thrust and to go and um and of course you know uh, in english you will still say this kind of ram earth so in english you will still maintain the image of that uh, two horn animal uh thrust against something to make that uh, earth itself 
so it's the same uh, mental concept in human being. And uh, the Sumerian also have this um, uh, app. It actually means the cow, and the gu is actually means the cattle, the bull, and but then as time went by, it doesn't mean only the cattle. So it means all kinds of two horn animal, and of course, you know the gu actually become also the gold word. You see all this gold, gold, all this came from the a very ancient concept of the two horn animal, and uh, again I go. I bring you to see the earliest pictograph and then the first cuneiform. Uh, this, this is the dub sound and means the, or thrashing against, as I said. And then uh, this is the uh, doubler, means a tower. And you will see that the earliest, this is a picture I took in Yemen, all the towers were made by Adobe, all right? And then the Sanskrit actually um, maintained those dub sound, but they changed the dub to t, t and the, the, the stupa actually is a of course you know what the stupa is this is one of the early form right there and then uh, in English actually you have the top thumb and tem the temping uh, of the uh, earth okay uh, that's why you know the Tower of Babel story is so famous because at this time the whole human race was in a very uh, big rush to build different kinds of ritual building and also city walls and um, everyone was actually doing the same thing and you will see that uh, as I said the Sumerian used this to mean hip up to pile and then they have a similar form like that to mean gun and then it means a shine or establishment the Chinese actually seem to have maintain this sound we have this sound in Cantonese Gun Gun is actually means the Taoist temple but then the Chinese actually uh, mean uh, maintain the tap on this on this side okay the tap sound the tap in Chinese in Cantonese actually means a tower of gold of course this is um, to the uh, Taoist temple and tap is actually the Buddhist temple so we use the different sound to distinguish different religion but this uh, um, no matter whether it's the top or the gun, it's actually from very, very ancient sound already. So I want you to again pay attention to this thing that you saw in the previous slide. And this is the, um, again, this is the word right there. It seems that they were all building this kind of building with a kind of like a life shape right there. The ancients seem to have used this bull horn shape to mean life itself. And then this is hieroglyph. As you will see, this kit here means to build. And look at this. This is the Chinese. It's exactly the same thing, but in a very sim uh, simplified form. There's a person holding an uh, earth pounder and then uh, pounding on the earth right there. And then we have the word kin or or uh, kin or kin okay you see all this line right there it means to build to establish and to construct and then uh, of course the Sumerian uh, didn't draw the people but they use these lines to show you the the pounding of the earth and for them it just means to work okay you see this line right there and then again as I said the word uh, karma as to work and then the other thing is activity because this is a bullhorn right there it means the unseen energy is moving this is the karma is also means that energy is also moving one is action the other is like a kinetic movement so um, you will see that um, I will show you uh, something in reality in building and then this is hieroglyph this is Chinese Chinese, this is Chinese, but I also want to show you that um, pictograph actually tells you much more information because Chinese actually holds two different forms. One is this and the other one has something like a fire underneath. But of course, you know, uh, you will understand that, you know, uh, uh, people might be carrying clay, but for those people who mind, who, who go underground to mine, you know, this is a very hot place underneath, you know, the mine. So uh, it actually means uh, the miners. So uh, so even if you're looking at the same pictograph, because it's a slightly different information given there, so you can be sure that you are given different information right there. So in the Sumerian, again, it means to work. I will show you a bunch of different languages 
languages that um, means to work. Okay, this is Hausa, uh, an African language. This is um, the uh, the vowel sound, which means the unseen energy, and also carry the keys to work. And this is Hebrew, Iga, also a vowel, and the k k sound means to labor. And then Persian ka is to work. This Chinese, you know, because it's it's a, it is uh, an agriculture country since a long time. So sewing itself means uh, also use this word ka means you know, it's a very wearisome work that you have to work. And then the Indic system or the Indian words. This is Gujarat karma is to act and to work. Hindi kam is to work. Of course, Sanskrit karma is to work. And again, uh, of course, if you uh, even you speak in modern English, you will see that um, karma. You know, you always say that it is what you work that brings what comes back, right? So um, the other column right here, I want to show you something lighter. And then the Greek kano means to do, to work, and then uh, from the then become the German, the conan becomes can or no. Of course, English, I can do something, means your ability. And also back to Hebrew, can means something, yeah, I can do, yes, means something positive that you can do. You see all this meaning slightly different, but in different languages, language families why is it so so i again i'm saying that it is not a tree we all share a common core in the same ground okay and then i want you to see to work and in olden days you know when i was a child to work always i see a picture like this but i just want to show you something very interesting uh, recently i saw a japanese rep uh, i mean a uh, website teaching japanese and the work to uh, to work um is someone sitting there like that to teach the word to work. So it is quite interesting. That's why I want to show you, you know, just to have a look. And okay, this is uh, a picture that I show you, a slide that I show you last time already. Um, I show you that um, other than clay, we pound them together. So in a place where there is no soil, uh, well, what do we do? Okay, this is some a Chinese word also uh, has the sound do. Uh, you can see very clearly that it's pounding the city wall. This is a pounding. This is a, a bowl that you pound. And um, also the other thing that carries the dip and dap sound and also means piling up things. And this is actually a picture that I took um, in the uh, in Yemen, in the place where they said uh, Osama bin Laden came from and it's very difficult for me to get there but after I got there I actually saw a lot of ancient th things and um, there is no clay nothing but how do they uh, live there, survive there? It is also by piling up something. So if you don't have clay, you still learn to pile up whatever you have. Uh, so this is a little girl, you know, trying to draw water from a well. And um, okay, and so uh, all human beings learn how to pile up things to build. And then um, last week, I actually want to correct myself. Last week, I said that uh, I took this picture. Actually, I, I didn't. I wanted to show you this is a picture in China. I visited the place. That's true. I took the pictures, you know, but I couldn't find the picture. That's why this picture is actually from the internet. This is a place in the east coast of China where people piled up oyster shells to build houses. This is a very strange culture that I actually follow from place to place. I actually believe the Phoenician has been to the coast of China. This is a place where uh, they have a very strong culture but I will uh, talk about it another time and again I will come back to this um, the same place I will show you the well that they have and other than that you know they pile those things to build a wall and also they pile downward to uh, also make the well and I uh, here I want to show you two different uh, uh, cuneiform in, Sun in Sumerian uh, also carry the same aga as the leader okay uh, one as you can see clearly is a four horn bull head and the other thing looks a little bit strange you know so why is, is it so so I look at the dictionary everywhere and uh, the symbol itself actually means to hip up to pile up as you can see from all those lines so is it possible that it actually means the leader of a construction site so is it that um, the 
uh, cuneiform actually also brings you more information other than just the alphabetical uh, writing. So um, you will see that the lines also con uh, persist in, in their writing. So this means to guard and to protect. As you can see clearly the, the, the uh, adobe soil right there and the this one you know with the pounding sign right there it means to work again if you see them all together you understand them better okay so i will show you how the ancients start to urbanize themselves first of all again the same picture you will see the they are carrying the the uh basket right there and then uh, the Assyrian also have this basket right there to meet the have the sun key or the key. This all mean a land, a location, or the foundation. And the Chinese, of course, the K and the K also means foundation. The Chinese have the basket, also have the earth pounder right there. And then uh, they all this all mean foundation or a location. Okay, the hieroglyph card means to work, and then the person also carrying a basket and uh, one more uh, one very important object right there as I said this gun the Chinese has the gong and then the gun or gu right there it's also the Sumerian it actually means low tax tribute work it seems that very early on they started to um, have tax taxing the people by asking the people to work you know just like this stage you know you use your labor as a way of paying tax it's very um, natural so uh, this is to work and this is to uh, to guard or to protect. Of course, after that you build a wall is to protect the city. And then um, the Chinese has this symbol. Uh, sounds uh, in Chinese is king. You will see all this line right there. It actually means the, the 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 tower right there. And you will see that right there, the city tower, the Chinese, and the king. And actually, uh, the city you know as Beijing these days used to call Peking. The king or the king actually based on the Cantonese sound. This is uh, the city in the north of China is actually a war city in the olden days. That's why it is the capital and because it was built, you know, with a wall all around it. So that's why the Chinese call it Qing, right there, okay? And then you will see that hieroglyph right there. You see the people are pounding. The Chinese also Qin, Qin, Qin. And you see people count, count, uh, pounding. And you will see very clearly that they were pounding a corner. You will see this corner. I will see, I will show it to you right there later. Okay, it's Qin. And then you see the hieroglyph right there is piling up wall. Chinese also have a symbol like that. It means the heart, strong, and then the firm. Of course, you know, you will see that they are actually piling up the wall. As I said, this is a very important symbol the Sumerian used to mean the city. The U right there, it means the city. That's where your word urban came from, all the way came from Latin, okay? It's not only from Latin, it comes all the way from the uh, Sumerian. And, and this uh, fence right there it means to shut, to protect. So this is also uh, synonym right there you will see either is to build a wall or to to uh, go around it and you will see that the Chinese right there to build or to establish actually holds two very important part right there one is the earth grammar the other is this corner right there it seems that the ancient were very obsessed with the building a strong corner so I will pay a little bit of attention to the corner I travel around the world and I will see a lot of ancient adobe walls always you know put a very very strong rock right there at the corner of course a lot of the pressure actually puts down right there and um and maybe that's why the ancients started to use this corner to mean a city and again you know you see the ancient sumerian word i mean the tower still carry this corner right there and this hieroglyph still carry the k sound and this is a chinese cook means something curved band and this is Chinese uh, to build, as you will see, all this corner right there. This Chinese word right there is actually means uh, a state, and then it gradually means the country itself. You will see this 
corner right there. The corner still, um, for some reason, the Chinese started use the corner as a synonym as the horn itself. As you will see, um, the horn, you will see that the animal horn is also leading this word, English word. And, and it seems that they have a habit of putting all this horn at the corner as a way of protection. And finally, in the later stage, we finally circle around that to mean the country itself. And then all this word either is a ke or the ge sang, okay? And um, this is a Chinese word also, koi. It, it, at the beginning, it actually means to hide as well. And this is to hide. And this is also to hide a person right there hiding. Look at this. This is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. This is also to hide. I don't know un why uh, all these were paying a lot of attention to the corner. And perhaps, you know, it the corner itself worth a lot of uh, research itself. And okay, I will go on to uh, let you think. Oops, sorry. Um, Okay, I will let you think a little bit about language do not develop on its own without finding expression through cultural practices. Because um, uh, a lot of the linguistic uh, research now, they only put words, you know, in a linear form and then on a, on a pa piece of paper. But I do believe that uh, language actually expressed in all kinds of cultural forms. So uh, underneath here in this slide, I will show you how. This is a picture again, I talk in Yemen, in this very strange region in the desert um, people actually put a lot of horn right there and for some reason and this is back to the capital Sana'a Sana, and they put horns like that in a different way so people in different region of Yemen this is in the desert this is in the capital either they put real horn like the Chinese writing uh, putting real horn there or they put shapes like that but you will see that this horn right there in Italian, you will see it corner. Corner, actually Italian means horn. That's where your word corner comes from. So it seems that the ancient word corner and the horn actually uh, is mixed all together. So um, I will show you quickly that all this English word, you know, also carry the animal right there. It means protection or the shelter. Uh, sometimes it can be aggressive. Sometimes it can be passive. Either you hide you hide in Egyptian hieroglyph or in Chinese or you actually expel the Chinese actually have another word carrying the same sound it meant expel to push it away so I don't know whether this is actually more aggressively pushing something away so of course in Buddhism they we also share the same hand signal we call a mudra okay so carry the same sound so it's, it's actually quite interesting so uh, I think I will stop right here. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to go so fast, but uh, I want you to maybe go to the uh, YouTube or come back to look at it again and think a little bit over it. Oh, thanks.